Thank you, thank you. You may be seated. Well, this is the last session with you, and afterwards we'll leave you alone. <laughs> when you have a surname like Leaf, you can make lots of jokes. Reminds me always that when we gather together, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, He is with us and present. Is that correct? So I want to give you a different uh, view of that. Reminded me of this pastor down the road who took his wife out to the movie house. And while he was at the movie house, a burglar broke into his house and was looking around for DVDs and uh, DVD machines and so on. And it was dark. And he heard this voice saying, Jesus is watching you. So he looked around the corner, shined a torch, and there's a parrot in the corner. So he said to the parrot, did you say that? The parrot says, yes. He says, what's your name? The parrot says, my name is Moses. So the burglar says, what kind of stupid name is that? What kind of stupid people give your name Moses? The parrot says, the same people that call our Rottweiler Jesus. <laughs> All right. You're getting it. Okay. Maybe it's my accent. Okay. We have books here available still. And I, I kind of calculated correct that just hopefully be enough for you. There's a four-book special. Any four books, save yourself $12. And uh, Caroline will be talking about uh, mainly from this book tonight on mindsets uh, this afternoon from Think, Learn, Succeed. And if you want a good summary of uh, the weekend in terms of the mind-brain, think uh, and switch on your brain. I also want to encourage you to go to our website. We have many group studies, nine-week group studies, videos, workbooks. We have downloadable uh, links like Netflix on DVDs uh, for all our works. And uh, we have uh, a new app, the Switch app, and we have online programs. Everything is designed to help you. We want to help you renew your minds so that you can bring forth the glory of God wherever you are in this earth. So I'm going to leave you in the capable hands of my wife, and I want to thank you very much for honoring us by coming today. We appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, so who's been here at all? Who's here for the fifth session? Like, has, and hasn't missed one? Wow, there's a few of you. Okay, so you can give this talk now. <laughs> okay, so good morning, everyone. It's such an honor to be here. It's been such a fun weekend. I really love Planet Shakers. I love the people. I love your leaders. They're just such friendly, happy, great people. So just to all the leaders of Planet Shakers, I just want to give a great, an, another thank you. <laughs> Sam and Russell and everyone. Okay, so I'm going to talk about mindsets today. As a cognitive neuroscientist, I have been studying the mind-brain connection for the last 30 years and showing how science and spirituality are not at odds with each other. They're totally complementary. So if I don't say one single scripture today, and I just talk science, I'm still talking God's stuff because where does it come from in the first place? So everything we know about everything is coming from God. So all knowledge comes from God. So science is a beautiful way of really understanding how God has made us and how the earth works and how we work, etc. So I use science to help understand that. I am a scientist, I still do research. If you want to know more about my research, you can go to drleafresearch.com. We're always doing clinical trials, showing people how the, the impact of bringing thoughts into captivity, renewing your mind, how you can use non-pharmacological approaches to healing, to mental health. What is the truth about mental health and so on? So this morning specifically, I'm going to talk about mindsets. We're going to talk about the concept of mindsets and how this relates to mental health and renewing the mind. Mindsets basically as an overarching view of how we should see life daily. So um, the information, I'm going to tell you a ton. So it's in the mindsets specifically are in this book. I call these four books my mind toolbox. So a toolbox to get your mind working properly. So first of all, we need to acknowledge that we have a problem. And that problem is that we're not managing our minds properly. And we see from the research that the mismanagement of mind is damaging the brain and the body. And in this current generation, it's leading to people dying 15 to 25 years younger. 
This has been the theme of this weekend. I have been talking about how, if we don't manage our mind, that it is going to have an effect. And we're seeing a very interesting effect of the mismanagement of mind in this generation. Every, since the beginning of dawn, the beginning of time, the dawn of mankind, we have battled with our mind. So it's not something new, and this is why we are encouraged to renew our minds. But in every generation will have a, have a different impact. And this generation, the impact is that even despite advances in technology and medicine, people are actually dying younger, 15 to 25 years younger from medications, mismanagement of mind, which is damaging the brain and the body, body and increasing vulnerability to illness which means that our children and the next generation of children, unless we do something, they're going to be dying 15 to 25 years younger than what we are going to die, which is terrible. So we have to do something about this. We have to fight the current system, which is talking about mental ill health being on the rise. We need a new narrative. I actually just put up a post yesterday of an article. I write a lot for general magazines all over across the world. And this is, there's an article, and the link is in my, um, on my social media. But I'm just going to read a quick quote in relation to this problem, which is in this, in this magazine article, which kind of summarizes the problem that I'm talking about. As a society, we urgently need to redefine the way we understand mental health. We have to re-examine the way we help people who are going through difficult times. We should teach adults and children alike not to see people as broken brains, but people who have experienced trauma in life. Indeed, as a society, we have to learn to stop placing the blame squarely on the shoulders of the individual who cannot escape the circumstances of their life and step in and see where we, as a community, can help. And that is really what my life's mission has become. I no longer practice clinically. I still do research for this purpose and I now go around the world teaching this everywhere in every situation I possibly can. I train physicians globally. I work in the medical community, the education community. I train teachers, I work in churches, everywhere I can to help individuals in society to manage their mind. And that's why I'm so excited you're here today and that you've been, those of you that have been here all weekend, because honestly, you can make a difference. One person can impact thousands. As you change your mind, you're going to impact thousands of other people. So if we can cumulatively start working on how we manage our minds, we can have a tremendous impact on this planet. So the solution is renewing of the mind. If you don't get your mind right, I pray that your soul will be well so that everything else will be well, Paul talks about. We see throughout scripture that this is the injunction, that we need to, you, you have to have your mind right to even process scripture. You have to have your mind right to even believe what God is saying. You have to have your mind right to understand when you, to actually sit in church and process and worship properly, etc. Everything, what you're eating, your mind is involved in everything. Your mind is 99% of who you are. Your mind is your spiritual nature. In science, we call it the non-physical. It's the 99% of who you are. Your mind is not your brain. You are not your brain. It's a quick summary of what we have been learning all weekend. I encourage you to watch all the, on, I'm sure that everything will be online. Watch it all. So you're not your brain. Your mind is separate from your brain. Your mind works through your brain and your brain responds to your mind. Your physical brain and body are only 1% of who you are. The 99% is your mind. You, your mind is your thinking, feeling, and choosing. And when you think, feel, and choose, you build thoughts. You're building thoughts all day long. And we're supposed to bring every single thought that we build into captivity to Christ Jesus, okay? So that is bringing all thoughts into captivity, renewing the mind, those scriptures we say all the time. I talk about the science behind them. My toolbox, the stuff I've been talking about this weekend, my switch app is all to help you to do this. So as a society, we can become decent humans again, because I think we've become pretty un indecent, some of us, in society about the way you just have to look around and see what's going on. So the solution is renew our minds. How you use your mind is predictive of how successful and healthy you will be. And healthy doesn't necessarily just mean completely physically healthy. You may have some kind of physical ailment that pursues you your whole life. It doesn't mean that you're lacking in faith or you're a bad person or you, whatever. It's how you are rejoicing despite the circumstances. That's a healthy mind. Can you have the peace and tranquility in the midst of challenging times, okay? So are you using your mind to thrive, just thrive? I mean, to, to, sorry, just to 
survive or are you using your mind to thrive? There's a massive difference between thriving and surviving. Are you just surviving or are you thriving? Are you able to, in amongst the pain of an illness, the pain of loss, the pain of trauma, are you still able to have the peace and tranquility that comes from knowing God? Are the fruits of the Spirit active intrinsically in your life and coming out of you? Are you able to express your emotions, admit when you're wrong, talk about your feelings and move forward, like we see so clearly laid out in the story of the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus facing the issue, crying through the issue, sweating blood through the issue, going to the cross and rising again. We're not meant to suppress, we're meant to express and deal with our stuff and move forward. We're not meant to get stuck, we're meant to move forward. But you can't move forward unless you actually admit what's going on in your life. Okay, so that is really what we are been talking in, in general. That's just a very quick summary of what we've been talking about. Now, I want to take this into a, a, a different level now to help you even more. Because when we talk about renewing our minds, I want to talk about the sort of overarching mindsets that we should have when we talk about renewing our minds. So when you say things like the fruits of the Spirit, and we must have those in our lives, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control, those are very important qualities that need to be intrinsic inside of us. How do we release those? And that's one of the questions I've been asking myself in my research over the years and trying to help myself, including my patients and now those that we reach all over the world. How do we do this? What, is, what should we do when we wake up in the morning? Now, I know that we should be putting on our armor and the sword of faith, and, and those are metaphorical for what does that look like? So I'm going to tell you through this mindset, what does it look like to put on your armor and pick up the sword of the shield of, put on the shield of faith and the sword of the syrup, spirit and all, sword of the syrup, sword of the spirit, okay? <laughs> Not syrup, okay? Very bad stuff there for your brain, totally destroys it, okay? So I'm going to try and help you understand what this should look like daily. That's, that's why I say a mindset is an overarching kind of view of life daily. So I define it for you first. What is a mindset? A mindset is like an attitude. So when you wake up in the morning, what should you dress yourself in, okay? Each individual thought that you think, thoughts are real things. Thoughts occupy mental real estate. They're physical things, like this church occupies physical real estate. Your thoughts are real things. With your mind, you think, feel, and choose that spiritual 99% part of you. As you think, feel, and choose, you cause genetic expression, you make proteins, and those proteins hold your thoughts. And those proteins group into little trees, that's a toxic thought, that's a healthy thought. Okay, we've been speaking about that this weekend, you'll see me talking, it's a big core part of what I teach. As you think, feel, and choose, you store physical structures, thought patterns in your brain, okay? And then, you're through your, then from those you speak and do. So your mind works through your brain, stores it in your brain, through physical matter, and then you express that. But you need, as you are doing this thinking, feeling, and choosing, what is your overarching attitude of these thoughts? So every thought has got branches, and those branches contain information, and then the thoughts got leaves, and the leaves are the emotions. So every thought that you build, which is every experience that you have from the time you open your eyes till the time you go to sleep, through your whole life, so as you experience whatever you're doing, you're building memory right now, you're building thoughts right now, I'm giving you information. You'll go from here and have conversations, you'll have lunch, you'll do whatever it is you're doing this afternoon, you'll go to work tomorrow. All of this is learning, all of this is experiencing the signals of life, you think, feel, and choose, and you're building responses into your brain. And everything you build has information and emotions. So the thoughts you build have information and then the, in the branches and the emotions, imagine, are, are the little leaves. And that combination of information and emotions is your attitude. So a mindset is this attitude. So look at the next slide. Okay. So this is Prince William. Okay, so the first one looks like he's swearing at you. And the second one is holding up three fingers. This is exactly the same photograph taken at exactly the same time from two different perspectives. Okay, so it's the, he wasn't swearing. He was actually holding up three fingers. But from the one perspective, that's what it looked like. And this is what a mindset 
does is it brings a perspective to how you are going to view a situation, how you're going to view the day. And the fortunate thing is you may start off with a bad perspective or a bad mindset, mind, bad attitude, but you can change it at any time. That is why what you're doing when you bring a thought into captivity and you renew your mind, you are shifting your perspectives from the one finger or the toxic to the healthy. So it's all about how you look at things. Mindset's all about how you, your attitude, which is how you then view things. Your attitude will produce your perspective. So a toxic attitude produces that toxic perspective. I'm not gonna hold up my finger. I don't wanna get into trouble for swearing in church. Okay, but you get the idea. So a mindset, the correct mindsets are integral to succeeding in schoolwork and life. If you wake up in the morning and you have a one finger perspective, you know those days, they just go from bad to worse. If you're in a conversation and it starts, you start getting the wrong perspective, maybe misunderstanding what that person is saying, maybe making assumptions you shouldn't have made, maybe seeing it only from your, your view and not from their view or whatever the situation is. And it can so quickly spiral down, downward. But you have this incredible powerful mind that you can capture those thoughts that you are thinking. And I spoke about how to do this in detail in the first session today, how you can go into superposition, which is that ability to evaluate the incoming signal, signal of the conversation, your upcoming memories, and the attitude of that whole situation. And at any point, you can renew your mind and change it, and change the way that that is the outcome of that situation. This is not going to be successful in a relationship, in a conversation, in a work environment, in dealing with something in your life, this is just going to, you're just not gonna have clarity. It's very bad for your brain. When you have the wrong perspective, you mess up the neurotransmitters, you cause neurochemical chaos, you cause damage in your brain. You actually cause brain damage when you have the wrong perspective. And you can feel it, brain fog, not feeling so good, you feel quite anxious, edgy, etc. So you will feel that, so you need to listen to your body, okay? So the correct mindsets are integral. What are mindsets? So over the years, I've researched this concept and there are around about 15 broad, and science is never always 100% accurate. So I've got 15 up here, but I'm sure as time goes on, one could add to these. But this is from 30 years of collective research looking at this combination of concepts. Now remember, a mindset is a state of mind. It's an attitude. It is the information and emotions. It is an overarching daily perspective that is produced from your Thoughts, okay? So this is a healthy mindset and this is a toxic mindset. So all 15 you see on the screen, if they're in the healthy zone, those mindsets are operating in the correct way, doing the right stuff in your brain and body, and you are producing the right kind of fruit. It's kind of like the radio example I gave on Friday night, which I'll give you again for those of you that didn't hear. A radio takes a non-physical electromagnetic wave and through electronic equipment converts that and a sound comes out. When we connect into God through connecting into the right mindsets, I mean, we connect into God, we develop the right mindsets, so now we've got this non-physical energy, this wisdom from God flowing through us, and we convert that through our thinking, feeling, choosing, brain, reaction, mind, etc., and the body, brain, reaction, building thoughts, and then we speak that word in season. We don't speak like a clanging gong. We will speak wisdom with the right mindsets. So we're renewing our mind specifically to each detail of each thought, but we need to develop overarching mindsets for the day. So the way I've put this together in my life is when I get up in the, when I wake up in the morning, I do a kind of mindset check. And I, this is quick, it takes seconds. It's an attitude, it's a decision that I make, a deliberate and intentional, I wake up and am I in this? Am I? Think, and I'm gonna explain a few of these now. Am I controlling my emotions? Am I thinking correctly? Am I whatever? And I'm gonna, so as I explain each of these in detail, um, eat a few of these in detail, you'll get the, the, uh, the idea. But I've literally put these on in the morning. I'm going to have a forgiveness mindset. I'm going to manage my stress mindset. I know someone today will do something that will frustrate me or irritate me or hurt me. So I'm gonna go into today already with the correct mindset, which is going to be one of forgiveness. I'm not going, I know today is gonna to be potentially has going to have lots of things to, to do that I'm going to, you know, lots of busyness and whatever. So instead of going in, oh, I can't handle this, whatever, I'm going to go in with stress working for me and not against me. See, so in other words, I wake up in the morning and I have a daily attitude check. 
what am I going to do? I'm going to put on this godly mindset. If you want to use Christianese, and science is the same as spirituality. So I'm, these, I'm being very practical here. I'm going to have these. So I'm explain what they are, a few of them, and then you'll get a better understanding. So let's talk about the first one, the thinker mindset. You're a thinking being. You're designed to think things through. You're designed to be self-regulated. You're designed to bring every thought into captivity every 10 seconds. We've been talking about that all weekend. Neuroscience shows us that we are actually able to bring all thoughts into captivity. All thoughts means that all 8,000 to 180,000 thoughts that you think in a day, that's kind of the amount that we estimate. Average person thinks about 30,000, but it's anything from 8,000 to 180,000. And the scriptures say you're supposed to bring all of those into captivity. So if you go to bring all of those into captivity, this means that you have to be very self-regulated. You have to be thinking. The other thing that is important about this thinker mindset is that your brain is not as powerful as your mind. Your brain gets tired. So if you don't adopt a thinking mindset where you're going to think things through, where you're going to give your brain breaks, and I'm going to give you some tips in a moment and how to understand this, then you are going to get physically exhausted. And you're going to think you're burnt out or you're going to think you're depressed and anxious. Meanwhile, all you needed to do was have a couple of minutes of downtime where you switch off to the external, switch on to the internal, and have a thinker mindset. So the thinker mindset incorporates a couple of things. It incorporates us giving my brain a rest, and you should have at least 15 minutes a day spread over the day or in one point in the day where you actually just switch off to what's going on around you and you literally let your mind wander. Daydreaming. Daydreaming is very good for you and very informative. In this book, when I explain the 15, I explain what they are, I define research and I give you activation tips for how to develop these in your lifestyle, okay? So little practical things that you can do to train yourself to have a thinker mindset. So let's talk a little bit about it. Switching, what does it mean? It's switching off to the external by switching onto your internal thought patterns, allowing spontaneous thought processes to flow. It declogs the brain, literally, because your brain, your mind is so powerful and there's so much going on around you. We can handle it if we manage our minds properly. When we keep just go, 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 without switching off, and if, even in, you don't have to wait for the middle of the day to do this. Let's say that you are, the minute that you're feeling, oh, it's too much, my head's sore. Close your eyes, switch off, even if it's 30 seconds, and just let your mind wander. Just let it spontaneously wander. If you want to hook onto a scripture, or you can do it however you want. It's kind of like a meditation, but it's also a daydreaming thing where you can in, explore your creativity. Very powerful when you get into this. Okay, It's relatively free from focus thinking and in external influences. So you're not being driven by someone's conversation or by an email or by a text or by, you are actually just switching and just seeing what is going on in my mind at the moment. What are the thoughts swirling around? Very insightful because you can see where your thoughts are going and how jumbled you actually maybe are and you can make a few notes. I have a lot of little tips of how to do that. Acti it's, it's activated through, the thinker mindset is activated through daydreaming. Now we all thought that daydreaming was bad. It's good for you. Okay, daydreaming is good. It activates the brain, gives the brain rests, um, it, it reboots the brain, and it helps you to be inspired and get creativity, connecting with the Spirit of God, okay, all that kind of stuff. And so mind wandering and creative thinking, all of that's pretty much what you're activating with the thinker mindset. Eleven studies were done by the University of Virginia and Harvard with people that were between the ages of 18 to 77, and they were put into a room and they were told to just think. No cell phones, no iPads, no computers, just a chair in a room. And they just, in 16 minutes, they were told to just, just let your mind wander, just switch off and just think. In this day and age with the advances in technology, I discuss this in depth in this book as well, technology is fantastic, it's a great form of communication, it's a great tool for communication, but if you misuse it like anything in life, it will work against you instead of for you. So therefore, you need to be quite careful about how you use technology. Your brain merges with whatever you're focusing on the most. Your brain merges. So if you're forever looking at your cell phone, whenever you have a break, you've got to be careful. You've got to make sure that you balance that with how you're using those mind-wandering moments. You've got to have time for your brain to relax and process. So what they did with the studies, they put these people in this room, and the general response was people hated it. 
They didn't know what to do with themselves. People are so used to being stimulated that they, and, and doing something like looking at your phone or whatever that they didn't know how to just sit and just daydream. One of my favorite things I do every day when I'm at home and when I'm traveling, I find a sauna. Saunas are just have multiple physical benefits, but that is where I sit and I do a lot of switching off to the external, just letting my mind wander. Find time. I'm also really good at just staring and mind wandering because I've learned the power of calming my mind down through that exercise. It's very powerful. So these people didn't like doing that. The average response was they hated it. In fact, there was a little shocking device hidden in the corner of the room, and you really had to be looking for it to find it. And 54% of people found it and preferred to shock themselves than sit and just think. Okay, so we have forgotten how to think, and that it will spend time thinking deeply about things. You know, there's that poem, what if, this time, what if this life is full of care? We have no time to stand and stare, to stand beneath the boughs and stare as long as sheep and cows. Be it like a sheep and a cow. Just stay. Just let your mind wander. Just connect with the Spirit of God, with the wisdom of God. Powerful. Georgia Institute of Technology found that daydreaming during school and meetings indicates intelligence and creativity. So you might be in a meeting and, and for a few seconds you might just zone out into this, into this mind-wandering daydreaming state which will then help you refocus and come back into the conversation with more insight and so on. British Columbia University highlights the importance of the thinker mindset to identify thoughts that are stuck in the rumination process. Like a cow ruminates on cud, we tend to get, rumination is, has got a negative implication in that you get stuck on, they did this to me, they did this to me, and you keep going over and over and over and over in your mind on the negative things. We don't always, aren't always aware we're doing that, and it's so toxic to the brain and to the mind. So by having a thinker moment, we give ourselves a chance to actually bring those thoughts into captivity. What am I ruminating on? Why am I getting stuck? And write those down. Now you have a focus that you can start reconceptualizing and redesigning, which is what we've been talking about all weekend, taking our thoughts into captivity and redesigning them over a process of 21 days. Okay, you can find that information, as I've mentioned, in my materials. Okay, so there's, there's 16 universities worldwide show that 94% of people across six continents experience intrusive, unwanted thoughts, images, and impulses. So if you've, got, if you've got lots of those going through your head, you're not alone. It's a very common human thing. And it's something that we need to deliberately and intentionally manage. Because if you let it go down the wrong toxway, toxic pathway, you're damaging your brain, your body, feeding back the damage into your mind, and creating this whole disruptive pattern, which can lead to feelings of mental ill health. And we can change these things so easily. What I'm telling you is that what it says in scripture is so true. I'm giving you the science behind why we seriously need to bring all thoughts into captivity. Let's talk about the stress. So, okay, so every morning I put, on, I put on my thinker mindset. I deliberate to do that. Then I put on my stress mindset. Stress is good for you. Okay, stress can work for you. Stress is your bodily's response to your mind's focus. In fact, if you don't stress, you can't learn properly. So when you go into stress, your Brain, what, uh, you're basically what happens, I'll give you the big picture and then we'll look at a little bit of the detail. Basically, I'm standing in this zone, which is the love zone. When you go into stress, positive stress, which is good for you, which is the normal thing, your neurotransmitters function differently. Your blood vessels around your heart will dilate, which means you'll have more oxygen and blood flowing into your brain, which means you'll be able to have more cognitive flexibility and think clearer and be able to access the wisdom of God in the current situation that you need. And let's face it, the human condition is, li is tough. Life is tough. You constantly need to access the wisdom of God. So by God has given us the design of the stress mindset where our sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system of our body work in a balance and release the right amount of chemical reactions in your brain and your body so that your physical brain is in top form to help you, your mind work through it in top form and you've got this great feedback loop and now we can access the wisdom of God. Does that make sense? So stress can work for you and not against you, by you deciding and understanding that stress is good for you. We've had so much bad press about stress. Everyone thinks stress kills. It's not stress that kills. It's your perception of stress and your perception of the event. Those are the things that put you in the toxic environment. 
Okay? So when you change your attitude to stress, instead of thinking when your heart starts pulpit and pu pumping and the adrenaline starts flowing, instead of, and, and your face starts flushing, and you start getting that HPA axis response, your hypopituitary hyper thalamic response, which is fantastic. Instead of thinking, oh my goodness, this is so bad, and you start going down a toxic pathway, instead of doing that, say, wow, this is fantastic. These responses in my body are going to help me have clarity and access the wisdom of God. Just saying that makes your body work for you and not against you. But if you don't, and you get succumbed, sucked into that and think it's bad for you, and then you start just getting panicky, and you start getting into maybe having panic attacks or whatever, then instead of the blood vessels around your heart dilating, they will constrict. Now you will have less blood flow to your brain and less oxygen to your brain. Your parasympathetic and your sympathetic nervous system go out of whack. Neurotransmitters don't flow properly. Your whole body goes into a state of toxic stress because the message to your body, the signal to your body from your mind is that this is bad. This is terrible. And your body now works against you. In a split second, you can have either reaction. So the stress mindset is such that as soon as I wake up in the morning and I go through life, as the day happens, when I start feeling that response in my body and I start feeling that fogginess in my mind, immediately I say, this is fantastic. I'm going to make it work for me. And just by shifting my attitude, I change my bodily response. Okay? So... You've got, the stress mindset looks at the glass, full, you know, the glass half full versus the glass empty. It affects the blood vessels around the heart, etc. So I've said that. Worrying about the effects of stress will actually put your body in stress, toxic stress. So stress is good for you. So when you feel it, make it work for you. Tell yourself, this is great. I can, I can scream, cry, laugh, experience my emotions in this zone. Guys, get yourself in this zone. When you're in this zone, the beautiful body and brain that God has given you will help you through that next moment, that through that next crisis. A study showed two videos, one showing stress as debilitating to performance, one showing how stress enhances the human brain and the body. The former had improvements in mental and physical health and vice versa. Okay, so what they did in that study, I think I've got the study on the next slide, what they did in that study was they took a group of housekeepers in a hotel, and they split them into the experimental and control, and that experimental group, they told them that, 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 that the stress that you experience physically in your body as you're cleaning and all that kind of stuff is, is really good for you. You're going to lose weight. You're going to be so healthy. You're going to feel so great and everything. And then they, the other group, they just said, doesn't really do anything for your body, and it's a stressful job and all that kind of stuff. And there's, there's a series of studies in this region. I'm just giving you one of them. Um, in this dealing with this stuff. So what they found was the ones that had, had that priming of this is good for you, you're going to lose weight. What am I standing on on the stage? Something crunched under my feet. Okay, as long as it's not a person. Um, so they, the ones that had the positive input, they, that stress would work for them and they'd lose weight. They did lose weight. They enjoyed their job more. They had a different attitude. The other ones, it was, oh, this is terrible and I'm so stressed and I had my job and they put on more weight. So well, these, once uh, I'm going to jump to the next thing, look at the next slide. Perceiving events negatively is linked to a 43% decrease in health over the next 12 months. If you wake up every morning on the wrong side of the bed, that, oh, life is tough, oh, it's so terrible, oh, I hate this, oh, I hate that, oh, I hate this, you have in put yourself in the zone where you've increased your chance of your physical health decreasing by 43% in the next 12 months. And if you do it every day and you think toxically and you eat unhealthily and you're not doing exercise, don't blame the devil, blame yourself, okay? The devil's defeated. Just by the way, I've said it all weekend, just remember, Jesus did the work already, okay? People who, and the other thing, and the other thing is that people who served others, so in your state of challenge, as you serve others, experience a 68% increase in healing compared to those who only got treatment for themselves. We have bred in this reductionistic, materialistic, even in the church, a society of God, give me my vision. God, show me this. I want to get on the stage and be famous in front of people. You may not be some, I'm just giving you some examples, but it's all about me, myself, and I out there and a little bit too much in the church as well. It's all about what going after your vision, etc. Be very careful of that. When you understand your identity, like I spoke about in the first session, when you really get in the love zone, you're not chasing something, you're releasing something. Did you hear what I just said? When you're in the zone, 
you are releasing something, you're not chasing something. And releasing something, you will not be selfish. Chasing something makes you very selfish. And we're in a world that says you better chase, 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 and jump over everyone because maybe they're gonna get your parking spot, your seat in church, and your job that you want and the money you want. Okay, so we've got to be very careful of that attitude. So when you're in a bad place and you are really battling, one of the best ways of helping someone, of helping yourself is to go and find someone else who's battling. Text that person who you know and say, hey, I was just thinking about you. I just, do you want to chat? Email someone, phone someone, take them out for coffee and just sit and listen. Don't talk about yourself. Don't think about yourself. Sit there, look them in the eye and keep quiet. Don't think of your own issue, don't give your own examples, just listen. You've just increased your chance of healing by 68%, just by doing something simple like that. I have a concept that I was telling, talking about in the green room afterwards, where I'm called bench therapy, where I include all these kind of techniques and things to help churches create communities where you do this kind of stuff. When you change your mind about stress, you can change your body's response. You control your body, your body doesn't control you. Instead of viewing the stress response as a sign of anxiety, realize that your body is getting energized to help you meet the challenge. Rethink the stress response as helpful. So that is the stress mindset. I put that on, stress is helpful. I wake up in the morning, I will think. I will, take, I will think deeply about things. I will take my time to have times where I let my mind wander, etc. I will process through, I won't just randomly let information flow through my mind. If the information is relevant to me and important to me, I will take the time to think and understand that information. I won't just gather information like puzzle pieces and just never build the puzzle, which is what we do in our technological age. I will take the time to build the puzzle. I will take the time to mind wander. That's what I tell myself when I wake up with the thinker mindset. I tell myself as well when I get the stress response, it's helpful. My heart's beating faster. I've got more blood and oxygen in my brain. I am gonna get more wisdom to handle this situation. You see what I'm saying? I know I'm gonna help someone else. When I'm feeling the worst, I'm gonna reach out to my husband or my kids or a friend and say, hey, you want some help? Can I help you? And then you know you find yourself when someone says something to you that is maybe a little nasty or someone's irritated at you or someone snaps at you or someone, you don't get offended because you are in such a giving mode you realize that where they immediately are in the zone where, shame, I wonder what's happened to them that they have to react like that. Instead of thinking, oh, I'm so hurt. You actually go into that 68% thing and you're stressed. Can you see what I'm saying? This is a prayerfulness, a life of prayerfulness. This is capturing every thought. Possibility mindset, okay? It's seeing multiple possibilities in situations. Please re-listen to this morning's service if you didn't listen to it already. So go watch this and watch this one again because I spoke about the making choices, and I spoke about how in this zone, we have Hebrews 11, one in operation. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. So the substance and evidence of all God's wisdom, of every solution, exists in ingredient form. It's not baked cakes, sustainable, local, fair trade, etc. It is in ingredient form, meaning that everything that is needed, every possibility for every situation exists in ingredient form, which means it needs to be cooked. You need to find it, choose it, and cook it. And there isn't just one way. There's an infinite number of possibilities. Develop a possibility mindset. If you have a goal-setting mindset, you do not have a possibilities mindset. Goals will block you, will destroy your identity. So rather, don't dump the goals. They are really bad for brain health and go into possibilities. Get a possibility mindset. So I wake up in the morning and I know today I've got to do these certain things. These, this is my day coming up. And I know that uh, I've got my mind open immediately to all the possible permutations of what could happen. So when I get into the day and it doesn't quite work out the way I had sort of thought it would, I'm not thrown because I have a possibility mindset because I know that I can find other options, okay? So seeing multiple possibilities, an entrepreneurial focus sees multiple possibilities in every situation. This aligns with the optimism bias of the brain and the mind. The mind and the brain are built for optimism, wired for love. We have no circuits, no brain chemicals, no structures that are for anything toxic. We have a possibilities mindset. It's so exciting when you live life like this, okay? I know the plans I have for you to give you a hope and a future, okay? That's what we're talking about. We live in a world of probabilities with creative power in our minds to design blueprints of all these possibilities. You just have to unlock them. 
Sean Acad, oh, no, I'm going to jump over because we're not going to have time. Okay, in terms, just look at this. I've got a slide of my research just coming up. I talk about this. I'm researching this. I'm showing that when you have possibilities, mindsets, and how it changes your brain. So all my work is around this. If you want to, as I said, if you want to know more, take a shot of this and you, a, slide, a photo of this and just follow my research. And if you want to partner with us, it'll be amazing. It, let me talk about one more mindset very quickly, the expectancy mindset. Expectations change the structure of your brain. So possibilities is seeing the opportunities. Expectancy is this, ah, oh, I'm excited. I wake up in the morning, I'm excited for the day. And that changes and primes my brain to actually see things differently. So even though I might have a traumatic situation that will make me cry, I still have an expectancy mindset. There's a peace inside of me intrinsically that will be released knowing that I can keep my tranquility in the midst. So even if I'm saying, oh, I hate this situation, I get it out and I move forward. An expectancy mindset keeps moving forward. It, you, it increases the chance that you, what you hope will happen will happen. And that hope you happen uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for. There's so many things over here. You're not stuck with one view. That's why I say goals are dangerous because it's one thing. You need to have expectancy and possibilities, not goals. Understand the difference? It creates a heightened awareness, which is really good for brain health, really good for insight and intelligence. The expectancy mindset um, that the hotel attendants, they also did, I, I told you that one already, which went along with the stress mindset. They expected to lose weight, they lost weight. That's just one example. I'm going to jump across this. So I want to just talk uh, one more thing about the expectancy mindset is, um, if you think of um, the guy who invented the light bulbs, I've gone blank for a moment. Just bring up that one for me, Mac, please. Okay. Um, gosh, the guy who invented the light bulb, I've gone completely blank. Edison, thank you. I don't know why I went blank for a moment because I'm trying to think of 40 things at once. Chaotic mindset, calm down, stress work for you. Edison, okay. So he had a thousand attempts before he actually invented the light bulb. And when he was interviewed, one of the people said to him, how do you feel about your failures? The thousand failures, I think it was 1001 or 1003, third attempt that um, we, we, we led to the actual invention. And he turned around and he said, I didn't have any failures. I learned new information. So those failures, he didn't see in a negative light. He said those failures were learning experiences. He had an expectancy of it's not going to go right the first time. There's a lot of plugging that you have to do, a lot of failure, but in the positive sense that you will go through. It's a learning experience. That attitude is, is a great expectancy mindset versus saying, oh, I have all these failures. I'm such a failure. I got you're gonna get stuck on the first try, the second try maybe, but can you get to a thousand? You get to a thousand by seeing failures, expecting them to happen as learning experiences. Can you see the difference? So I have an expectancy mindset when I wake up in the morning. So that just gives you a taste of all these different things. So why are mindsets important? If your mind is out of control, and I'm finishing with this, if your mind is out of control, your life will be out of control. So. Having these mindsets as this overarching first thing in the morning starts helping you to get your mind in control so that you can live that every 10 seconds, capturing every thought lifestyle. Great preparation. When we choose a mindset that extends our abilities rather than placing limits, that should be placing limits on ourselves, we will experience greater satisfaction, emotional control, and physical health. In conclusion, your, well, in summary, in ending, I'm never finished. I've only just begun, but I have to end because of time. I mean, this is a conversation we could have for hours. But remember, your mindset can catapult you forward, allowing you to achieve your dreams, or put you in reverse drive if you are not careful. Thank you, everyone. It's been so great being here this weekend. I've loved being here. Keep in touch. Send your testimony.